Hello, good afternoon. It's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFTs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for were Tuesday, the 9th of August 2016. End of day market review of the European indices. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and marketplace from leading providers. You can download the app from the uh, Google Play and the Apple App Store. So for certainly visit www.tradesignal.com. Okay, now let's try and work out exactly what's happening here in terms of European markets. Look at, let's look at the uh, end of day's results. The FTSE up 42 points, uh, struggle at that 6870 resistance zone on the weekly chart. The German DAX, uh, I think the pivot high intraday was uh, just above 10,700, attempting to go for that gap fill at 10,740. The French CAC into uh, certainly finishing higher as well, 1.2%, up 52 points. So again, that certainly is bang into that uh, 200 MA resistance. Overnight in uh, Asia, you had the Shanghai up 0.7%, the Hang Seng certainly lower, and the uh, Nikkei up by 114 points, 0.7%. U.S. market still uh, holding on to their stellar and impressive gains, okay, uh, into the uh, evening session. Now, let's see exactly uh, the market reaction from a fundamentals, first of all. Okay, so economic data points, you had the uh, inflation data out of China on a month-on-month -month basis coming out better than expected at 0.2%, okay. Again, that certainly uh, tones down the uh, rhetoric for additional QE and additional rate cut and stimulus, okay. So that certainly negates that argument, folks. Okay, with that argument negated, with that argument negated, it's it's going to be very hard to justify any further moves high, move higher in equities. But yet equities continue to defy. Okay, I've been stopped out twice, still negative this week. Uh, I did manage to uh, break even this morning, and then I was stopped out on my Nasdaq shorts and my Euro stock shorts as well today. So again, it's very hard if you're a bear, uh, especially given the fact that you have no additional stimulus from the. Uh, the uh, Chinese central bank, uh, and again, no rate cuts, no uh, QE either with regards to Chinese inflation coming out stronger than expected. And one would have thought that that would obviously uh, trigger a risk off move, nor did it trigger off a move in the Kiwi or the Aussie either. So again, it's certainly a struggle at present, especially with Chinese imports down as well. You had uh, this morning in terms of economic data, we had uh, German uh, exports uh, certainly weaker than expected as well. Expected was around 1%, came in at 0.3%. Imports were slightly stronger, but again, not really helpful in the sense that, um, yes, it will help the rest of the Eurozone, but at present, the the QE uh, aspect is certainly is certainly more important, okay? So, i.e. the Euro and the Euro's ability to uh, reignite this potential export machine, which is Germany, and that obviously uh, bodes well for the rest of the Eurozone. If exports are not good, Obviously, earnings are not good. Earnings are not good for potential companies, and obviously, they're not going to hire. So, again, certainly a negative factor there as well. Okay, in terms of UK data, UK data certainly missed the mark as well. Manufacturing production coming, production coming in worse than expected on a month-on-month -month basis. Although industrial production came in in line, nothing spectacular. Okay, manufacturing production certainly falling. Trade balance exceptionally poor. Okay, minus 4.1 billion, ridiculously poor. Okay. Uh, trade balance certainly weaker than expected okay goods balance as well certainly weaker and again it is signaling a potential well certainly economic data points 50 percent chance of a potential recession and that's even prior to our triggering the article 50 and that's what's keeping them alive at present in terms of u.s data overall net net stronger than expected although the cut the unit labor costs certainly should be a worry coming in at two percent so again that certainly is indicating inflation and inflation we all know what's happening next folks once you have inflation, the next step, obviously, is interest rate hike. If you have an interest rate hike, again, that's going to be negative. UK uh, GDP estimate came in very poor at 0.3. So, again, a cause for concern for the FTSE 100. QE can only help so much. Now, Mr. McCafferty certainly set off the uh, the FTSE rally this morning with uh, suggesting, given the fact that he was hawkish previously, and then, obviously, he switched very quickly to a dove now, and, uh, and he's calling for potentially more rate cuts. So, again... That's not necessarily bullish for the uh, FTSE 100. So, again, the QE rally certainly has been factored in now for the FTSE 100. And one would argue that you are now looking to uh, potentially set to move low. Okay, so that's the summation of fundamentals. Let's go look at the technical picture now for the markets. Now, let's start off with the German DAX. Uh, a very important, impressive rally today, folks. The daily chart certainly is attempting to close that gap above, which is seen at 10.740. Is, the, is it justified to close that gap? That's the question, folks. From my perspective, no. There wasn't really any justification for the Jacks, DAX certainly to move higher and close that gap. So very hard for me to justify a rally higher. 
Uh, again, 60 minute chart, you have an unfilled gap below. Certainly expected that gaps are closed before we attempted a rally. But the German DAX certainly has other ideas and certainly is moving higher very, very impressively. 10 minute chart, the German DAX, we actually exceeded pivot R3, folks. I mean, that's very rare. You can see the RSI as well. I mean, <laughs> into that 90 region, you can see how overbought we are. Okay, and this market certainly needs to have a sharp correction. That's my opinion, and that's my understanding, and that's my expectation as well. So certainly looking for a very sharp correction here on the German DAX, looking for a retracement, okay? So uh, German DAX, from my perspective, certainly bearish. Okay, let's look at the French CAC now. The French CAC on the daily chart. Let's just bring that up for you, folks. Okay, so you have French CAC into gap fill, uh, back into that gap fill resistance zone, okay? Took out the 200 MA, took out the... Um, this is a fib 75% back into the horizontal zone, which is at 10, which is at 4460, 4470, impressively. Okay, so certainly took that level out very, very impressively, folks. So again, certainly keep an eye on that in terms of the next potential direction on this market. Okay, so daily chart of the French CAC, from my perspective, is into resistance and looking for a move lower. Okay, 60 minute chart, you're into pivot R3 resistance. Your RSI is into that uh, zone of uh, currently 80 now, given the fact that 70 is your trigger point. And you're into R3 resistance and therefore looking for a move lower. Okay, so bear that in mind. You also have horizontal resistance up here as well. Okay, 10 minute chart on the French CAC again, from my perspective, given the fact that we're into pivot R3 resistance, looking for a retracement and looking for a pullback lower. Okay, going to the FTSE 100 really starting off with a weekly chart. Weekly chart is into resistance. Key resistance is seen here at 6860 zone, 6870 zone. Again, indicating a move lower. Daily chart, again, you have this horizontal resistance here, which is seen around the 6870, 6850. Again, looking for a move lower. 60-minute chart, you have higher highs and higher lows. And again, looking for a retracement here, folks, looking for a retracement. 10-minute chart, you certainly have broken out this uh, mini pseudo wedge. I like to call it pseudo wedge. It's not exactly very promising, okay? Again, if we do flush, then you are looking at 6830 potential support on the downside. Uh, but from my perspective, the weekly chart of the FTSE certainly has, given the fact that we rallied from the pivot low here on expectations of QE, we've rallied almost a thousand points now, folks, or more than a thousand, almost 1100 for QE. So QE certainly has been factored in here, okay? From my perspective, it certainly is baked in the cake. Obviously, if this market continues, then you do you are going back to 7100, but you are seeing Im immense turbulence here. That's my expectations for immense turbulence in this zone, okay? This zone, very, very important. And therefore, expect immense turbulence, okay? Okay, so looking for FTSE to pause here at 6870 and looking for risk aversion to kick in, okay? And looking for the markets to move south. That's my interpretation. With stronger US dollar, obviously confirming the potential rate hike that's coming. And the most important figure today, I think, was the uh, the actual inflation boy, okay? Which, again, not many people focused on was the unit labor costs, okay? If I bring up the US dollar chart for you as well, give you an insight there. Uh, I can bring up oil first. You can see oil, oil certainly has found resistance at 43.5. Double top now and looking to potentially move lower. US dollar chart. Let's just bring up the US dollar chart for you folks. Bear with me. Okay, US dollar chart as well. Looking at the four hour chart, you have the inverted head and shoulders formation. Looking for this uh, inverted head and shoulder retracement here, and then looking to potentially push higher on the back of this uh, stronger unit labor cost data. Also, you had other economic data as well. The US today that certainly was uh, arguing towards the uh, the body side. So, again, looking for a move higher, folks. Okay, that's my interpretation thus far. Okay, 60 minute chart certainly in support. Looking for dollar strength. Okay, so I think that's a market wrap. Be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and take advantage of the potential bonus there. Goodbye now.